And women, you know that the most dangerous word you could ever say to a man is, can we talk? Because for us, we're going, oop, I'm in trouble. And we're going to have to talk it out. And for you, talking it out may not need to have a solution. But for him and his social conditioning and programming, solutions are the things that get you back in the game. Blessings and blessings. What's up, y'all? I have a theory. Multiple theories. And all of them involve uh, men and women in relationship. And as some of you guys know, Alexi and I are building a relationship course right now. And we have a relationship challenge coming up. So I've been diving deeper into this. And I've been doing all this work with men. right? So I have Man Cave, which is all men. And then Stretch 22, which is essentially all women. And... Not all women, there's men in stretch weight too as well, but I do a, a lot of work with men and a lot of work with women. So I get to hear what's happening behind the scenes. As you can tell by the title of this video, um, I have a theory that most men are afraid of women. I'm not calling that a fact, but it sure is leaning in that direction. And I'll explain why in a second. Um, but I'm gonna start with a story and please just leave a comment below whether this is YouTube or Facebook or Instagram TV um, Just leave a comment below and just just type like hell. Yeah, like I'm in let's do this right because um, Although this appears to be a one-way conversation your comments and your energy actually supports what comes next I don't have these things written out. I just get these hits, and then I go, okay, you got a little time, turn on your camera. So this is just me working out and expressing some of the theory that I have. So I'm gonna share uh, just a brief story um, that I think all of us could potentially relate to, and I would love for you to comment, like, if you can relate to this. When I was a little kid, and we would play on the playground, and it was like maybe the 15 to 20 of us that were like all, like we all liked the, the same thing. And so we'd make a decision, okay, we're going to play basketball today on the hard top on the playground. And so we'd be out there playing and balling, going at it, going at it, uh, uh, going at it. And then somebody would like go up for a layup or something and get hit and fall and scrape their knee and be bloody. And the game would stop for a second. And everybody would go, oh, let's just say Tommy. Tommy, you scraped your knee. Tommy's crying. Oh, my knee, my knee, I hurt my knee, right? And then so Tommy's friends, his like closer friends, would come to his side like me and a few other people and be like, yo, you okay? He'd be like, oh, I just hurt my knee. Almost instantaneously, the thought that's happening for us and all the other boys is, okay, we need to sub him out so the game could go on. What would happen is, is we would say, hey teacher, Tommy hurt his knee. Or we'd say, yo Tommy, just sit right there, go get yourself some ice, we're gonna keep playing. And so Tommy, Preston, Adam, every other guy, for the most part, in Western cultures, are raised to learn how to self-soothe faster. Without community, there to talk out, right? Talk out your problems, your issues, the things that are happening for you, your feelings around that scrapes me. Now, I have seen and had a different experience of, let's say, young women, little girls raised in a Western mentality. And I've seen it different in, 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 in Africa. In Tanzania, it's not the same. But in Western cultures, it is. I've seen it different in India. But in Western cultures, I've seen it this way. A little girl's playing with her friends. They're, they're uh, hopscotching or they're doing that thing where you double dutch. There we go. Jumping rope. A little girl trips. Let's say her name is Susie. She trips, she falls, she scrapes her knee. Everything stops. She's crying, she's feeling, she's emoting. You tripped me. No, you didn't. I didn't, I swear I didn't. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. Oh, everybody, the whole thing stops and it becomes about her and her feelings and how she gets to talk out these feelings. Now there's nature and there's nurture. The nurture part of the Western idea along with how 
mommies and daddies, film and television music treats and holds the feminine, AKA, well, when I say the feminine, not just the feminine within each and every one of us, but actual women, is one of you self, you, you learn how to soothe through talking it out. You learn how to soothe through, through expressing your ideas about what's happening, even if it's about one of the girls who you believe tripped you. You raise a little girl like that, you raise a little boy like that. And then at some point their, their hormones start to come into, to, into play. And they have this, this urge to merge, to, to come together, right? There's this like sexual tension and we start dating. And all of a sudden you have this 18, 19, 20, 25 year old young man and this 20, 25 year old young woman dating and having two different paradigms, social conditioning, training, and programming from years, like the moment they came out. Big boys don't cry. Figure it out, work it out. If it hurts, hide it. Self-soothe yourself. Figure it the F out and get back in the game. Because if you wanna play, you gotta feel that and, and, and get back in the game because the game won't stop for you and your feelings. Hear it, let it land. And then everything stops for you and your feelings. And so my theory about men are afraid of women, let me, now that we have this context, this is what I mean. I work with men all the time and what comes up for them and women, you know that the most dangerous word you could ever say to a man is, can we talk? Because for us, we're going, oh, I'm in trouble. And we're going to have to talk it out. And for you, talking it out may not need to have a solution. But for him and his social conditioning and programming, solutions are the things that get you back in the game. He wants to figure out a way to fix it. So he hasn't figured out a way to, to build a bridge that can hold all that feedback. Especially if the feedback is coming in I statements. I feel like you. You know, I'm experiencing this and I feel like you don't care as much as I do. So now the thing that is innately driving him to show up for his family to a job he may hate has become the thing that you're using as a tool to speak for and about his character. This is going to create issues. Now, are you wrong? No. Is he wrong? No, two realities. But the realities aren't clean. This is not a clear palette. This is not a clean slate. This is a canvas that has been painted on by the Western culture. And women, you guys have been attacked way more than us. They never let up. They're selling you ideas all the time. I have deep compassion for that. The world is different for a woman than it is for a man. I walk through a dark alley, who gives a F? You walk through a dark alley, all of your spidey senses must be up. You walk into a boardroom, you, get, you have to align and move your energy so that they don't wanna fuck you and they can hear your brain and your thoughts and your ideas. I walk into a boardroom, yeah, maybe they have some issues with my blackness, my afro, my hair, but outside of that, because I'm a man, I already get a certain level of respect. I hear you, I see you, we're in this together. This is not about either or. This is about the merging of the great divine masculine and feminine with each and every, within each and every one of us. What to do about it? Well, what to do about anything has more to do with our perception and understanding, right? Because I can't, it's very difficult to have compassion for something that I don't understand. So going back to the idea, for him, the solutions create a space for him to get back in the game. And the game is where pleasure and joy and excitement is. For you, the game is in the talking it out. Maybe you don't even need to land somewhere. You just need to say the words. But he hasn't built a bridge or built a body or even have in, an understanding, and neither do you. And when one gets righteous about being right, about being right, then those bridges can never be built. So. Awareness comes before choice. The, just bringing this awareness to your next conversation, this awareness to your next sort of like, ah, okay, this is what may be showing up for him. Now, back to it, just to like nail this home a little, even, even more. You take that seven-year-old little girl, you keep giving her the opportunity 
to experience her emotions and share what's up for her and talk it out. And she becomes a wordsmith. She becomes a mental ninja, especially in the midst of the pain. Now, you take that same little boy who has not had that same training and you put him with someone who has and get into the conversation of, well, you said this or you didn't say that or you did do this and you didn't do that and replaying things, right? Because that's what we have. What happens when we argue with each other? We replay. We go, well, you said this, and if you wouldn't have done that, then I wouldn't have done this. And all this contempt and criticism starts seeping into the conversation, and then he gets flooded. Whew. Chemical cocktail. Whew. Goes through the body. Fight, 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 fight. I'm out of here. Ah, ah. Right? Domestic violence is not okay in any sense of the word, and women definitely are a part of this conversation because you guys, I've been punched in my face multiple times. Just me. Women, you are a part of the domestic violent conversation, but I'm speaking to the men at this point. It's never okay. And I get how once you're flooded and someone's following you from room to room, telling you that you aren't shit when you've been showing up and waking up at five fucking in the morning, every morning to go to a job you hate to provide for that family. I could see how. In that moment, somebody chasing you around and you're flooded and your body is going into fight or flight that you turn around and something happens. Doesn't make it okay. You run faster. You give yourself the space and the time to get away. I've never hit a woman and I never will. Guess why? Because I will get out. I've been chased. I've, been, I've had women put their hands like this and do my face like that. Do you know how disrespectful that is? And I've never hit a woman. So hear me, fellas. I am not in any way condoning. You run faster. You protect yourself and you get out. And come back when you're not flooded. So you can actually have a conversation. And even in the conversation, both of you, and this is why we're building this course. This is why Alexi and I are building A Bridge to Love, which is a fantastic 12-week program journey with your partner to build that bridge. Oof, that is where the work and the magic lies. It's not, you see, we, we, we bought this idea and this myth about communication. You gotta communicate. If you're just, if you're communicating, then everything else is good. No, it's not just communication. There's so much more than that. And everything is speaking, even if you're not using your words. Everything is speaking. And so we're gonna uh, um, bring in and introduce some practices and some things that will support a journey, a 12-week journey. I think that's all I have.